It's time we heard again from that broth of a boy uh, who I think is Ireland's sexiest comedian. In fact, it has been said that when he kissed the Blarney Stone, the stone kissed him back. <laughs> now I want you to meet the man who said it, Mike Newman. <laughs> What a tremendous introduction. Toxophily, that's a big word. That's a, I know another big word, huge. <laughs> I know a fellow, actually, who shot his wife with a bow and arrow, and when the judge asked him why, he said he didn't want to wake the kids. <laughs> We're in London again, which is exciting. I'm in a tremendous hotel, which is one of the nice things about London. It's a magnificent place, very expensive. I'm doing it through a building society. <laughs> I walked in the door, I said to the fellow, go down, looking for a room. He said, with running water? I said, no, I never sleep with Indians. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing, the decor, it's all in red. There's a sort of a red carpet and there's a red bedspread and it's got reddish sort of wallpaper and the ceiling is sort of red. There's a red telephone keeps ringing and I can't find it. <laughs> there's an English fella in Ireland on a holiday staying in this hotel. In the early hours of the morning, a little head comes around the door and says, excuse me, sir, was it seven o'clock or eight o'clock you wanted to be called in the morning? And the fellow said, no, it was nine. What time is it now? I said, see, it's ten. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of Irish lads in London for the weekend having a ball on the booze, having a drink. They get back to the hotel, very drunk. This fellow, there are about eight floors up, and this fellow looks out the window, and it's been raining, and the ground is a bit wet. He says, it's for late, Charlie. Did the, did the swimming pool down there? Swim, a swimming pool. I think I'll have a swim. Jumps out, sunk under the ground. Looks up and his mate is like that on top of the, on the legs, like that. He said, you better move down a bit. This is the shallow end. <laughs> I've got a thing about westerns. I love westerns. On the pictures, on the television, anywhere. I like westerns. There's an Irish cowboy riding across the west. He's held up by the bandits. They say, your money or your life. Fella says, you better take me life. I'm saving me money for me old age. <laughs> <laughs> There's a cowboy riding across the west. Comes across this Indian land. Oh, look at the floor down there. What a sensible place to put the floor. Look at that now. They're all so clever in England. Look at that now. If that was in Dublin, it would be on the roof. <laughs> Where was he up to? There's a cowboy riding across the west. Comes across this Indian line in the road like that, this Indian line there in the road like that, this Indian line there. Cowboy said, what can you hear, Indian? Indian says, stagecoach. <laughs> Six horses, four black, two white, <laughs> three passengers, two men and a woman, a driver and an outrider. Cowboy said, that's fantastic, Indian. How can you tell so much about the stagecoach? And Indian says, it just ran over me neck. <laughs> <laughs> A little applause, a little applause, a little applause. Thank you kindly, thank you kindly. I admire your taste. <laughs> we, I've got a brother who's not as clever as I am. He's a bit of, he's not so clever. He's a, he's a, he thinks the Encyclopedia Britannica is a British made bicycle. <laughs> this is a new type of comedy, no laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> got a job on a building site and he's working like a devil carrying bricks up and down a ladder. Up and down, up and down, up and down. His friend says to him, you're working awful hard, as to say I have them all here, you know, it's the same bricks all the time. <laughs> he walked into the foreman and says, one of the lads has fallen off the scaffold and he has conclusion of the brain. And the foreman said, no, I think you mean concussion of the brain. No, says he, I mean conclusion. He's dead. <laughs> like he kept... <laughs> Like he kept saying to the foreman, why don't we have tea breaks? And the foreman kept saying, because it would take too long to retrain you. <laughs> <laughs> so he's out poaching and he caught a duck. And he's sitting by the river pulling the feathers out of this duck. <laughs> and he hears the farmer coming, so he pops the duck back in the river where it swims around. And he sits by this little pile of feathers. And the farmer says, caught you, Poachy? No, he says, you didn't. No, you didn't. The duck is having a swim and I'm minding his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so 
somebody waving at me again. They wave at you all the time on television. I must get off. It's been nice talking with you. It'd be nice to each other. Good night and good luck, good luck, good luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love his sense of humor.